Hey there here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. So out of nowhere, HTC actually unveiled the new Akamin standalone hybrid PC VR mixed reality headset, let's say. They actually started teasing it a while back and we talked about it. And while I was wrong in some key features, well, I guess I was right on the crucially excited part. Yeah, cause yes, this headset might be very exciting on some parts, but also it has some drawbacks that well, we need to talk about. Let's discover this new headset, the HTC Focus Vision, together in this video. Let's get into it. All right, here we are. So what is the HTC Focus Vision? Well, this is gonna be the next hybrid standalone PC VR headset from HTC with full body tracking support and without the need of any base station. So the particular thing here is that you can use it directly as a standalone headset with its own games that are gonna be pretty much the same of the Focus 3 because at the end of the day, this is very similar, not pretty much the same of it without many features added in some key points and that makes it more immersive and more useful for a certain demographics of people. So yeah, you're gonna be able to use it as a standalone headset, you're gonna be able to use it for PC VR wireless using the standalone part to actually stream the content from the PC or you're gonna be able to use it in a new way with a PC VR wired kit that by the way if you don't pre-order right away it's gonna have an additional cost of $160 yikes that is gonna let you use these headset the screens at their full potential without any encoding and decoding but you know to a display port output. Something that is very rare lately, we actually got something similar with the Pimax Crystal, but it wasn't the best as the software is still not there. We had a great implementation with the Pico Neo 3 Link, and now in the same way this is gonna happen with the Vive Focus Vision. There's a good part and a bad part. The good part, of course, is that we can use the cable, so have, a, you know, the full resolution available, the full output available from the display port, and that is gonna be paired with the two very high resolution display of 2446 by 2446 each eye, running up to 90 Hertz. And while that sounds all fantastic, well, they're paired with the old Fresnel lenses that in 2024, it just baffled my mind. Not because Fresnel lenses are inherently bad, I actually used the Vive Focus 3 many times in different arcades and it was kind of fine, but pancake lenses are a thing right now. So going to Fresnel lenses in a very bulky design, it kind of feels odd also because of the price point, because this thing is gonna be $999. Yikes again. One thing that I talked about in my previous video is that I thought it was going to actually get in competition with the Quest 3S, a cheaper version of the Quest 3 with Fresnel lenses and lower resolution displays. In that way, well, cutting the price, we were able to actually bring something to the market to actually compete if someone didn't want to get in the meta bandwagon. But yeah, here the thing is not very easy. That might be justified by the fact that it has many different sensors and the capability to actually have full body tracking uh, for different applications. But we also have to say that these headsets, it's gonna come with the XR2 Gen 1. So the same chipset that we had on the Quest 2, the Pico 4, the Pico Neo 3, well, things that were already kind of old. So yeah, that is odd. What they said though, that they'd improve the RAM, uh, so it will get faster, they improve the heat sink, so you're gonna be able to dissipate heat much better, so maybe they're gonna be able to overclock the chipset and make it run quieter for longer period of time, and also like, you know, get better performance out of it, but we're still having a generation behind of the headset that is double the price of the latest headset from the competition, the Quest 3. And what do you gain though here? What might be still very interesting for some people? Well, we get high resolution mixed reality. We don't have details about the resolution of the cameras yet, but we know that it's gonna be stereoscopically corrected. So uh, it's gonna be feel natural for mixed reality applications like it happened on the Quest 3 or the Apple Vision Pro, for example. It's gonna be colored, so not black and white like it was on the Focus 3. And on top of that, we're gonna have depth sensor and apparently IR illuminators to actually have better hand tracking to use and tracking in applications or in the system. So that's a very interesting part. On top of that, we're gonna have eye tracking, so we're gonna be able to use for the other rendering to actually improve the performance of the standalone part and also have eye tracking, of course, for social applications. The cool thing, uh, different from what happens on the PlayStation VR 2, is that eye tracking will work also when connected to PC VR for, for the other rendering and of course for, you know, 
moving your eyes. That will also be paired with an automatic IPD, so uh, when you wear it, it's gonna put the lenses in the right position. That's actually a pretty good thing for Fresnel lenses, so you're never gonna have the situation where someone wears it and, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't have the sweet spot in front of them. And it's gonna have hot swappable batteries. The difference though with the Focus 3 that already had this feature is that you're not gonna have to reboot between you know, swapping the batteries, but there's a battery inside your headset as well. So you have all the time around 20 minutes to actually, you know, take it out, take it in and uh, keep your playing session. It's gonna be compatible with all the accessories of the ACC Focus 3. So the face tracking, for example, that you can buy separately or well, all the battery swap accessories that they have. And it has support for micro SD cards till two terabytes of storage. And that is huge. So who is this headset for? Well, putting things together, I think there are two big demographics that might be very interested in this. The first one is VR arcades because, well, the ability to just put a headset on, have the lenses go in the right position, have the possibility to use it with PC VR, directly, having also a suite of software that VR arcades are very used to with all the five applications, hot swappable batteries, SD card, well, everything seems ready for them. And uh, it might be very interesting for them to use because it has high resolution and at the end of the day, it will be a very useful headset to just keep going all day. On the other side though, we have a very big VR chat enthusiast. They won every single tracker available on the market. And to be honest, there are not many alternatives for them right now. There's the Valve Index, for example, but then you have to add weird accessories like eye tracking that is not easy or face tracking directly from Vive. The resolution is also pretty low right now. And there's a behind where you have to add everything again and always use lighthouses. With this one instead, with an investment for their trackers, with an investment for the face tracking, you have pretty much everything ready and you're not gonna need any lighthouse, any particular area where you have to play. You can use it everywhere without any problem because everything is gonna support it there right away. Is it a pricey? Yes, uh, this is the HTC. Uh, it's just, I feel kind of dumb that I thought that it was been cheaper, but at least this time, I think it has an actual focus, an actual demographic that uh, they can get to. I'm still weird out by the processor, I'm still weird out by the lenses, but it seems that HTC just looked at their audience, they saw that everyone is actually using their headsets with PC anyway, and they came with a solution uh, with a possibility to actually use PC VR directly with the cable, and it's something that I would like to see on more standalone headsets, the difference is really palpable, you can feel it uh, when you use a native VR headset and something that streams, even if streaming is getting very, very good, and also with new protocols like Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7, it's even better, but there's always a compression, a decompression, and the image is never uh, like as crisp as a direct PC VR headset. And this will give it to you with also eye tracking, to have better quality, but also with frontal lenses, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm really curious to try it out though, because while it's pricey, well, at least it seems like they know their audience right now. I just thought that it was cheaper and uh, that hurts a bit. But anyway, guys, if you wanna discover directly, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. I think like if you pre-order right away, uh, you actually get uh, some games with it and also the PC VR adapter. Um, so it can be a better deal, uh, but yeah, this is expensive, but it has many different sensors and capabilities. But hey, what do you think about it? Do you think that with everything this headset will make possible, it will actually have a good value? I clearly consider they do to this a PC VR headset with, uh, you know, an helpful XR2 on the background. So as a PC VR user, I might be actually okay with it, but uh, those Fresnel lenses, that's what turns me off a bit, and that's why I can wait to see it in person to, you know, see if it's actually something still good to consider. Let me know your thoughts, and as always, if you like the video, like, if you did like the video, it's like, subscribe to the channel for our VR tech, if you love the channel, the join button there, little further, also the Patreon, thanks to all the patrons who join the channel, of course, and I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.